What's up guys, I hope you're having a great day or night. Today I'm gonna to be showcasing the super crazy offset clone effect. This effect can be made through 100% native After Effects and there are no plugins or presets required. If you guys do end up enjoying this tutorial, please drop a sub and a like below. It really does motivate me to keep going and this content is 100% free for you guys. All right, let's get straight into the tutorial. Hopping in After Effects, I've got this clip from Dondre I Drive, his music video. I will link it in the description below. Go check it out. It's a dope music video. The first thing we need to do here is duplicate the layer, and we are going to be creating a rotoscope layer on top of the background layer. So double click the layer, and here we have the layer in the feedback. Go up here to our Roto Brush tool, and uh, we will have this green tool. So with this, we just want to drag over our subject and mask him out and as you can see it will select stuff that we don't exactly want this is not the best example so if i hold alt it will turn red and this will deselect so hold alt and deselect everything we do not want once you guys get your first frame good you're going to want to hit the page down button or whatever your frame forward button is and as you can see it will try to rotoscope the next frame and you might have to perfect it a little bit to make it perfect just want to keep framing forward and keep fixing your rotoscope if it does get a little bit messed up and you wanna do this all the way through the clip. All right, so I've gone ahead and rotoscoped the entirety of the clip. As you can see, our subject's completely masked out. Next thing you wanna do is hit the freeze button and this is going to lock all those frames into place. So now that is frozen, all of these frames will be locked in. We can close out of our layer. And if we go ahead and hide our background layer, we will see that is just our subject rotoscoped out. Uh, but we can really improve this rotoscope really easily if we go up here on the left, increase the feather, I'm gonna go to around 12, and if you decrease the shift edge, it will just refine those edges a little bit. I'm gonna keep it at negative 100. Now we are going to start the offset effect. So we're gonna to wanna to go to our effects and presets, and we're gonna look up offset. Grab our offset, and we're gonna drag that onto the background layer. Now offset's pretty simple, pretty straightforward. We're gonna to go to our effects, the offset, and we're gonna to go to where we want our animation to start, and shift center two, we're gonna click the keyframe and it is going to make a keyframe where we want it to start. Now we're gonna go all the way to where we want the effect to end, which is gonna be over here. Just going to drag this all the way up as many times as we want it to spin. And I found a good number to spin is nine times. So if we multiply 960 by nine, we will get 8640. And this will perfectly land on the frame. Now if we go ahead and play that back, we have our effect and it is spinning. I'm actually gonna make that a little bit shorter so make these keyframes a little bit closer together. And now we have our effect spinning. Now we wanna make this a little bit smoother, so we're gonna highlight both of these, go to Keyframe Assistant, and Easy Ease. And this is gonna make it a little bit smoother and just have a cleaner transition. It's gonna speed up and then it's gonna slow down. It's gonna be a lot more natural. So as you can see, it's kind of unnatural. It's kind of choppy. You can see the edge of the frame as it goes by. We wanna get rid of that. So we're gonna to go to our effects. We're gonna look up Directional Blur. We're gonna go ahead and drag that on. Now we want to go to the beginning of our offset effect right here and we're going to keyframe the blur length. Now I'm going to make the direction go opposite to which way this is spinning. So this is spinning to the right so I'm going to make it go to the left to make it a little bit more natural. I'm going to go to the middle and I'm going to crank up this directional blur just until I can't see the edges of the screen so now it's just a blur. And now I'm going to go to the end of our offset and a little bit past it and I'm going to set this to zero. And what this is gonna do is keyframe our directional blur while our offset is going. As you can see, that already looks a lot cooler. Another thing we can do with our directional blur is right click them all, keyframe assistant, and easy ease. And that's just gonna make it a little bit smoother and more natural. So that is pretty much the entire background offset effect. Now we just have to make the clones, which is why we originally rotoscoped our subject out. I'm gonna click on our rotoscoped layer and we're gonna do control D. And what this is going to do is duplicate our layer so now let's go to where we want our first little clone to spawn in. I'm going to go to our effects and presets and get our transform effect. And we're going to drop this on our bottom rotoscoped layer. So this is going to be our duplicate layer. Make sure it is below. So we're going to go to the position and where we want our clones to start coming in. We're going to hit the keyframe on the position. When you're making these keyframes, make sure you are in the effect transform and not the default transform. Otherwise, motion blur will not apply. So we are going to start here and go out one, two, three, four frames and have our subject go to the right. So I'm gonna take my position and drag it to the right. And now if we play that back, we can see our subject just comes out to the right. Now that we have them coming out to the right, we want them to go back exactly when the offset ends. So I'm gonna actually open up our background layer and find out where the offset ends, which is on this keyframe right here. And on this keyframe, I'm gonna go back to my 
clone and I'm going to make the position at this keyframe when the offsets ends I'm gonna make that position 960 again and hit enter our subject will pop out and then right as the offset ends will come back into the offset and that just is one clone right there now make this a little bit smoother again we're gonna highlight all of these keyframes go to keyframe assistant and easy ease now we have one clone coming out from our subject and going back in lined up with the offset and that just looks super clean but to complete this effect we obviously want more than one clone so I'm going to take this bottom layer which has the animation with transform and I'm going to duplicate that with control D again now we're going to go to the bottom uh, clone again and we're going to go to the part where he comes out so this is the keyframe where he comes fully out and we're just going to make that go to the right a little bit more now we have two clones coming from behind him as you can see and we are just going to add one more clone so we're going to repeat the process going to control d the bottom layer go back to where he pops out and on this bottom layer we're going to take the position and drag it out even further so now we have four clones and they're all going to be synced up and come back when the offset hits so i think one thing that i'm going to do is i'm going to have them actually pop out a little bit quicker so I'm going to go to all my keyframes where he's popping out and I just want this animation to happen a little bit faster. So I'm going to drag it in a keyframe on all of these transform layers. And you can really just mess around with this effect and just see what looks cool, make it unique and make it your own. So yeah, now I've got them popping out a little bit quicker and uh, I just think that looks a little bit cleaner. Obviously, you guys can tweak around with the keyframe placement all you want. Uh, I'm just here to provide the general concepts. And guys, do not forget to click the motion blur on all of these clone layers. As these all come out, you can kind of see the motion blur here. If I uncheck the motion blur, it's just a little, it's way too robotic. Make sure you check the motion blur on all of your layers. This is the basic effect right here, but if you do want to add a little bit of extra sauce, I got you guys, don't worry about it. The first thing we're gonna do is add transform to our bottom layer. And we're just gonna add a little bit of zoom while it is rolling, while it is offsetting. So we're gonna go to our transform, go to the very beginning of the offset on that keyframe and we're gonna keyframe the scale. Now we're gonna go about halfway in to where all these clones are coming out and I'm just gonna zoom in to like 150. And then we're gonna go back to the end when the offset stops and we want everything to come back and I'm gonna set this to 100. Now I'm gonna select all of these scale keyframes, right click and easy ease them. And let's play that back and see how it looks. Now you can see the background zooms in and it zooms back out and it just adds a little bit more depth to this clip. The last thing we can do is the glow. So I'm going to drag our glow onto our background layer, which is our bottom layer. First put it on and it is way too bright right now, but that is all right. I'm going to up the threshold to probably like 71. I'm going to increase the radius and just see where that looks good. Do some tweaking with it increase the radius maybe up the threshold a little bit more so it's just like the sky that is glowing and the brightest parts now that i've got that all adjusted i'm going to go to the very beginning when our offset starts and i'm going to hit keyframe on our glow intensity i'm going to set this to start with at zero and pretty much the same process as the zoom i'm going to go to halfway through the clip and i'm going to set that intensity as one and then i'm going to go to the end where it stops offsetting and set it back to zero. Highlight all the clips, keyframe assistant, and easy ease them. You guys can see that glow just makes it a little bit more trippy, and I just think it really ties the effect together. And actually, I'm going to drag this in so the glow is not as long as the entire offset. So after finishing that last little adjustment with the glow and making it a little bit shorter, I think this is our finished effect right here. It looks super clean and uh, definitely a really cool effect that I think you guys should try out in your next music video or edit. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and like the video since this content is free. Uh, it really motivates me to keep going and uh, drop down below in the comments if you guys want to see any sort of specific effect that I could go over. And yeah, that's it guys. See you.